Good morning, everybody. It's Barb Katie. Happy New Year. This is 2021. And wow, we, how glad I am to see this year appear. I've learned so much in 2020, but I honestly can say uh, I bid it a very fond farewell. Uh, it's a little bit warmer where I am than where Rick is right now. Usually this time of the year, I head south and visit with my brother who lives in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, so, And then I go on down a little bit to Palm Coast and visit with my niece. I enjoy traveling with my cousin at this time of the year and getting back in touch with family and friends. And it's a wonderful, wonderful way to refresh, rejuvenate, and start a brand new year. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, and I guess I'm probably a little reflective. Uh, when I was at my brother's uh, for New Year's Eve, uh, we were sitting around talking, uh, and visiting with his children and uh, uh, a few close friends that had all been uh, practicing uh, social distancing and, and we were sort of safe within our little group. Uh, and it was a wonderful time and we got to thinking about what we wanted to do to commemorate the ending of a very challenging year, the year 2020. And um, you know, all kinds of opinions <laughs> were offered that I won't share with you. Uh, and then my brother got the bright idea. He said, well, you know, I have a calendar here of the year. Uh, why don't we, instead of setting off fireworks this year, um, burn the calendar? And I said, whoa, what a cool idea. Just let go of what was and focus on what lies ahead. And more importantly, on what is going on right now in this moment in time with everyone. So we got the calendar out and everybody helped to shred it up because if you've ever tried to burn paper, you know that paper just does not burn in the stock. You have to take it apart and sort of bundle it so the air can get into it. And there's energy uh, to help the fire burn. Um, so we had done that and each of us has uh, as we were doing so, reflected on the year behind, which was really interesting because as frustrating as the year has been in many, many ways, it's also been incredibly enlightening and informative. And we want to be sure we take all the lessons learned with us into this new year to empower our journey and to prevent some mistakes that we made in the past from creeping back in. I know uh, Rick had shared with me that uh, he's been struggling, and I think all of us identify with that because from time to time within this last year, I think every single one of us has been struggling terribly to uh, not go to our first go-to for handling frustration, upset, uh, whatever, and that t tends for most of us to be food. I've had my days, I've had my moments, I've had my weeks. Rick shared he has had the same. I, You all on our group here together have shared the same, that, um, you know, we feel the pressure, we feel the need for help and concern, and we miss not having our top's friends to talk with every week face-to-face -face in person. Um, as much as Tops Club Incorporated tries, it can't replace that personal contact. That's the reason Rick and I so faithfully want to spend time with you every week is to extend the outreach of TOPS to you on a real basis when maybe your chapters aren't able to do so as easily as we can. Uh, this Facebook group is uh, the one that I set up many years ago when I was president of TOPS. Uh, and when Rick became president, I asked him if he would do me the honor of continuing it with me so that we could stay always in touch with you on a regular basis. 
The group is always monitored by Rick and I. We always give input. We try to help wherever we can and make sure the TOPS outreach is real and personal to you all the time. Uh, we also have, as you know, our TOPS uh, website, which has lots and lots of tools. And we have our official TOPS Facebook page as well. Uh, a lot of people say, well, all I get out of TOPS is TOPS Magazine. And that always makes me very, very sad uh, because TOPS does try so very much uh, to make sure that you are well supported, well cared for, and that you understand what headquarters knows is that TOPS is all about you. It's not about a building in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's about you, the people throughout the United States and Canada. That is the heart of TOPS. That is where we live, breathe every single moment of every single day. We are people working through the problem. So with that in mind, uh, as I was reflecting, as I was getting ready to help light uh, the fire, uh, to illuminate the last day of the year in a way that ensured that we would get out of last year all that we could, uh, I got to to really drilling down on what did I what I wanted to take with me into the new year, and I guess. The one thing that I really want to take into the new year and have made up my mind that I'm dedicating my energy toward is to persist. Uh, I don't know if when you were a young girl you ever read any of the uh, Greek mythology stories or other mytho mythological character studies, but my parents love to get us things to read. And one story I particularly remember was the story of the phoenix and how the phoenix would rise from the ashes when everything seemed to be at its very, very worst. The phoenix would renew itself in the fire, cleanse itself, and rise from the ashes, ashes to be born again. And that's sort of what we did when we burned the calendar. It was not that we were... Uh, letting uh, all of the past go, but we were cleansing ourselves and honing in on those things that were best that we wanted to be sure we carried forward. So with that in mind, I decided, okay, I need to pr persist. And basically what does persistence mean? Well, it means keep, keeping at it, at it, keeping going, not giving up. We know what persistence means. And so I took the letters of the word and I sort of broke them out because I like to think that way. It keeps me focused and on task. And I thought, okay, you need to prioritize what's most important to you, uh, what you want to focus on most, okay? I made a little list of five things because my brain has trouble handling more than five thoughts at a time. And those were the th five things that I really wanted to focus on. And, you know, if you're prioritizing, you'll make up your own list and it will probably qu be quite different from me. And that's okay uh, uh, because my priorities don't have to be yours and vice versa. Then I got to thinking about uh, evaluating what was working and what wasn't. Because a lot of times you just do things out of habit. Whether it works or not, you just keep doing it because it's what you've always done. Uh, why change? Well, there might be a really good reason to change if it's not uh, giving you the results that you hope to achieve. And then I got to thinking again and I thought, Darn it, I really want to enjoy every single moment of every single day. I I really want to enjoy my life. I, I don't want to be uh, a negative Nelly. I want to be happy within myself every single day. And that's a really important goal to me as I persist in my efforts to live my very best life. Because my very, very best life needs to be one I enjoy and one that is filled with joy. Uh, then I got to thinking, okay, what do I need to reprogram? What do I need to readjust? What do I need to realign to get to where I am enjoying my life? Um, so made a 
a few notes of things that I could alter slightly that would really help me in that regard. And then I got to thinking, you know, there's one simple thing that I can do that can make a huge difference for me and for the world around me. And that is that I can smile more. And how simple is that? You know, you greet people with a smile. And you're sitting there thinking, well, I wear a wet mask. How will they know if I smile? Believe me, they will know. Uh, when you smile, your cheek muscles rise and your eyes sort of crinkle into crescents. And even with a mask on, you can see the difference. And I was testing it uh, yesterday when my cousin and I went to the grocery store. There was a lady who was really struggling across the parking lot and I just looked at her and I had my mask on and I smiled a great big smile and she said, I can see you smile through your mask. And that made me feel so good that she could see that I was happy that she was in the world and that she was getting on with her life. And I said, and I can see you're smiling back at me and that makes me feel really, really good. And it did, it warmed my heart to know that we had connected even though we had masks on. Uh, so I got to thinking a little bit more. Aren't you glad this is a short word persist? It only has seven letters in it. Uh, <clears throat> and I thought, uh, what new things? do I want to introduce? Uh, what new initiatives do I want to undertake? What do I want to insist I continue to do within myself? You know, what are these things that can make a difference for me every single day in small ways and maybe in large ways to keep me focused on what I hope to achieve for this year? Uh, which led me again to uh, thinking about simplifying my life, uh, decluttering my life, uh, stripping down to the essential parts of my life. Um, I think sometimes, and a classic example of that was getting ready uh, to talk with you today because I'm in a different location than I usually am when I send these messages out to you. And so, I was making a great big deal out of where am I going to do this? Where am I going to set up? How am I going to prop up my cell phone? All, you know, just blah, 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 blah. All stupid. Uh, <laughs> for me, stupid. Uh, I was wasting time and energy on something that really didn't matter all that much. So what I am doing right now, if you can picture it, I'm, I'm sitting on the little back patio uh, of the house. I, and there's a little table in front of me with a great big cardboard box on it. And my cell phone is propped up there so you can see out into the backyard. Uh, and that's my broadcast booth for today. Uh, simple, decluttered, stripped down, but it works. We get to talk and I'm out in the sunshine and that feels really, really great. And I'm really relaxed doing it, which is again, very, very important. Uh, so then I got to thinking, okay, since I've simplified, uh, what else do I need to do? And I thought, you know, the one thing that I struggle the most with is taking time for Barbara. I tend to make time for every single other person, uh, but I tend to often put myself right at the bottom of my personal priority list. Nobody asked me to do that, and I'm certainly not a martyr, but I tend to do it anyway. And so I thought, maybe you need to make sure every day you take a little bit of time just for yourself. Take time, if nothing else, to breathe in and out. Take time to rest. Take time to recover. Take time to relax. Take time to reflect on what's working and what isn't and what was wonderful and appreciated and what wasn't so great and that you really don't want to do again. So with that in mind, I came to the completion of my word for this year that's sort of going to formulate and frame my journey, which is to persist each and every day. 
And what that boils down to is simply living my best life each day. Making the best of whatever the day unfolds, because we don't know ever what the day will unfold. It's like the word says, it's a present. We get up in the morning and it's a present. And we get to open it up and be amazed and surprised and delighted for what it is as it unfolds. So, I wish you all the best new year. And each day, remember that you have been given a precious gift. It is your present. Don't waste it on regretting the past. Don't waste it on trying to predict a future. Live it. Enjoy it. Relish it. Revel in it. And put it to rest at night. Thankful for the fact that you've been given it to live and enjoy. You have a great day. I'm going to go take a walk, and if I'm real, real lucky, I'm going to get to stick my toe into the Atlantic Ocean later on today. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.